So thank you all again for keeping it right here on the amazing 102.5 FM where we have Andrea. Andrea, Andrea, I say them both interchangeably. I'm talking about her, though. <laughs> um, yeah, well, we, we have her in conversation today under our theme, Blossoming in Business. And we were just at that point where we were going to talk a bit about just common challenges that people have to overcome and stick through, go with that stick through itness with it. Um, and again, whether you're a small business, whether you're an individual, even a nonprofit leader, a visionary, a dreamer, what are some common challenges that people face? And they just have to learn how to navigate it. Um, you know, there's there's so many, but I think one is really just our self-talk, you mm -hmm. know. Um, yeah. It's so hard sometimes to it's like when you start a business you have to wear so many hats so yes. you have to know how to do all these different things and i remember when we decided to do this to open this business i had never had a brick and mortar business like this i'd mm. never i'd never done some of these things and so i was so out of my comfort zone mm -hmm. you know and i was challenged every day to learn more and to become yeah. more and to grow yeah. into this this role that i had put myself in basically yeah and so the self-talk becomes a critical component to um, to success, I think, yes, because yes. we can talk ourselves into failure yes. just as much as we can talk ourselves into success. And yes. so the challenge sometimes when you make a decision to do something bold or different than you've ever yeah. done before is really some of the messages that you hear in your head. Yes. And so I think if we can conquer that, then we can do everything else because yes. the work i didn't have an issue with work ethic i was no. going to do the work it was yes. not going to be a thing about that it was just conquering the kind of the battle in my mind that this i am supposed to do this and it's yes. going to be okay yes. if i just continue to take the steps that i know are necessary to take that with time it's it will happen yes and i felt maybe extra pressure because i was doing this with my daughter too yes. and so i i definitely wanted to be sure that i was modeling for her yes also What's the right attitude and behavior? Yes. And trust me, I didn't get it right all the time. Yes. There were moments when I just absolutely had my moments of weakness, and I was like, oh, my gosh, what, what am do I we doing? Do? <laughs> right, right. What am I doing? How did I get here? But then it was like, remember what your mission is. Remember what why you've been called to do this, and just continue to be that light, you know, yes. and continue to be that encourager. And, uh, and, and, I mean, my belief, because of the way that I believe, is I believe God would – would bless it if we stay yeah. faithful in, in yes. this thing that he's called us to do. And Yes. So hear that in, in the conversation when it comes to just um, the struggle, the hard part. It is that. It is the self-talk. And I, I've heard that consistently with many business owners, with any type of visionary leader, dreamer. It's the stuff that disqualifies you in your own head that you have to push past. But one of the things that this leads as a natural segue into is this idea then you said, I'm going to push myself, I'm going to grow, I'm going to learn. So how important is it to really be innovative, to evolve, to learn, to study, to go get a mentor, visit somebody else, get therapy? Like how important is it to do the work of being a well person if you're really trying to be successful in business? Um, I believe it's critical. Um, I believe that it's absolutely critical. In fact, I, I felt like there was so much more for me to learn. Um, I had been, I had a business of my own from home for years mm -hmm. as a wellness coach. And so doing this was so different. And, um, and although we do incorporate wellness coaching at our store and we do yeah. do those things, um, everything else I had not had done, I had not done before. And so I actually mm -hmm. did seek out mentoring yes. and I actually mm -hmm. mm -hmm. seeked out you in, mm -hmm. the, in the program that you have. And it made a huge impact. I was looking for answers. I had questions. I was looking for answers. And what's been most interesting, I think, about that has been that the answers have all been inside me. Yes, <laughs> the whole time. The whole time. But I didn't have I didn't have maybe someone asking me the proper questions. Mm -hmm. And so through those questions, it was it caused me again to self awareness, right? To self reflect yeah. and to think through some of these things and then reevaluate and um, like some of the, the things that we were doing. And I feel like um, it's just critical to always be a willing student, to always yes. be willing to grow and to learn and never feel like you know it all. I think yes. that like, if you ever believe like you know everything, that is probably the first okay. step to your end. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's, you're going to come to the end of yourself. There's always people yeah. that know more than you, yeah. and that's okay. Like, yes. that's great. Thank that's goodness beautiful. That there's still an opportunity to learn from others, and, um, and I'm always seeking that. Yeah. Even if it isn't 
even specifically related to my goal, I feel that it just rounds me off a little bit better. Yes. To, you know, it allows me to have a better perspective, not just in my own situations, but in others, because I have, I'm open to hearing and learning about yes. just other people's life and experiences and yes. wisdom. And your place seems to be a, a, a good setting for that. So you all, as you're listening, I'm going to circle back to that. But as you're listening, you all, I, I want you to just hear that, this idea that we have to grow or we should grow or maybe not should or have to, but we ought to grow as business yeah. owners to be remain uh, like relative to the times and to understand where we're going in our fields and in our sectors. And, and then I'll, I want to just uh, kind of move to this piece that you shared and I want to highlight it a bit and then attach it to this other portion. So you're in business with your daughter yeah. and then you said earlier even as you were working through your own self-talk you wanted to be careful about what you modeled for your daughter and so there's a seem to be this thread in there that has much to do with engagement with your legacy with what you leave and then so there's a legacy engagement but then there's a community engagement because you've also mentioned that the community would go and tell other people about who do you who, about who you all were so if you'll speak to us a bit about the importance of engagement relational engagement whether it's what i want to leave for the future with my ch with my child how i want to be with the with the audience how does all of that kind of tie in together um well, people, people people in business <laughs> how does that connect so um well so people in business so i believe in building relationships mm. and um and and that's my heart. My heart is to want to build relationships with people and, and the community. And so I think probably one of the, there's been so many neat, neat stories that have come from opening that store. And when we first started and it didn't seem like, you know, there was, was a flood of people coming right. through, um, God was still working in the midst. Like we were seeing people, um, we were seeing specific situations where people were going through difficult times and they were coming mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. for hope. Yes, for, for that no encouraging that word. Note. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, and so that um, that's a legacy that lives beyond us, right? Yes. So, and what I mean by that is, like, we had this customer, Mr. James, mm -hmm. and he was he was just a beautiful soul. He was in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and he was probably about three hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. And somehow, some way, that man who lived in this um, elder community yes. would wheel his wheelchair over to mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. um, at least two times a week mm -hmm. um, to get himself a cherry limeade okay and um, and so every time mr. James would come through that door everybody would be like mr. James yes. mr. James hi yes. mr. James that's the other thing we like to learn people's names so yes. we make sure that we say people's names um, when they come through the store and um, and one day uh, he didn't come one week and so I texted him to check on him I'm like, hey, Mr. Mm -hmm. James, we haven't seen you this week. Is everything okay? And he said, you know, I've, I I got to go to the doctor tomorrow, but I'll be back in. Don't worry. I'm like, okay. Anyway, followed up again, and uh, he didn't respond. And the next thing I knew, he'd come into the store in his wheelchair and everything, or Mr. James, and he he seemed off. And so he rolled up to the counter, and I said, hey, Mr. James, how did everything go at the doctor? And um, and he leaned forward. And I knew he was going to tell me something, and he said, the doctor said I have three months to live. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to wait to tell you in person, and you're mm -hmm. the first person I've told. Mm -hmm. and those moments. Those moments Th those like moments. that, where you yeah. can then turn around and say, mm -hmm. lean forward and say, you know, Mr. James, I just mm -hmm. want you to know that, you know, we believe in miracles here. Yes. And, it, and the doctors don't get to decide how long you live. Yes. God is going to decide yes. how long you live. You know, yes. he'll let us pray for you. We'll pray for you. And he would come in. I, that And so three months, forget three months. Six <laughs> months went by. Yeah. Nine months went by. Mm. And he continued coming in. And finally, when he was in the hospital, my daughter and I would go see him. Yes. And we were like, became like family. Yes. And so, so it was beyond. Even though our sales weren't going through the roof. Right. And nothing, like it wasn't right. happening. But your impact. Back, but I felt like the impact that That's what we you were said. being used. Yeah. And so it was like, that encouraged me too, to keep going. To keep because going. Because there would be more moments like that, more people like that, yes. that we would maybe have an opportunity to impact. Um, and so. Yes. 
So let us pause right there. We'll be right back after the commercial break. I'm going to say commercial break like we're on TV, but that's good, too. <laughs> we're going to come right back. Y'all keep it right here on the amazing 102.5 FM. We'll wrap up. We'll get another um, touch from, from Andrea and then, again, get all of her information so we can go by there and get our healthy starts. All right, y'all keep it here. <laughs> 